Steve here with a quick guide to using the MZ Butterfly tool. Before using the script we'll need to set our project folder. So go to the file menu, set project, then select the folder on your computer where you want your project to be saved. The Butterfly tool will save information into this folder. So if this isn't set then the Butterfly tool script won't be able to find this information. Now we need a butterfly rig which I've already imported into my scene. If you'd like to have a closer look at this rig, you can download it from the MZ Butterfly Tool download page. The butterfly rig can be set up however you like, so it doesn't have to be the same as this rig. The only requirement is that the rig must have a control for each wing. You can see in my butterfly rig that I've got a control for each front wing and each back wing. But if you preferred, you could set up your rig with only one control for the left wings and one control for the right wings. Once we have our butterfly rigged, then we position the butterfly so its body is at the origin of the grid axis. Then the next step is to create some animation for a wing cycle, which is one full rotation of the wings. I've animated my wing cycle so that it starts at frame 200 and ends at frame 240. So when I set the time range from 200 to 240 and press play, you can see we have a looping butterfly wing cycle animation. Now you can animate your wing cycle however you like, but for the butterfly tool script to work, you do have to start the cycle with the wings in an upright position and end the cycle with the wings in the same upright position. So if we look at the butterfly at frame 200, the wings are in their most upright position and then move to frame 240 you can see that the butterfly is in exactly the same position. If this isn't set correctly, then the butterfly tool will not work. Once we have our wing cycle animation, the next step is to save it, so the butterfly tool can use this wing cycle to create our new animation. So run the butterfly tool script to open up the user interface, open the wing cycle section, then type in a name for our saved wing cycle. A dialog box pops up to say that the butterfly script is creating a folder called data to save our wing cycle information into. And you can see that this folder has been created inside our project folder, which you will remember we set at the start of this video. Then select our wing controls and click on select wings. The drop down box below the select wings button now shows our selected controls. The next step is to enter the start and end frames for the wing cycle. So start frame is 200 and end frame is 240. Then click on save wing cycle. Now our wing cycle has been successfully saved and can be used to animate any butterfly model that has the same rig set up as our saved wing cycle butterfly rig. If you like, you could save more than one wing cycle, then each time you want to use a particular cycle, just type in the name of the wing cycle and make sure that the project is set to the correct folder. Now I could import another rig to animate, but I'm going to keep using this one. So the next step is to set the rig orientation. If you open the rig orientation section, you can see that by default, the butterfly script is set to work with a butterfly rig that is facing in the positive x direction. My butterfly rig is facing along the positive z axis, so I need to change the front axis setting to positive z. Now let's give our butterfly a name, which I'm going to leave as butterfly1. Then the script needs to make some changes to our rig to prepare it for animating. So we need to select a root node for the butterfly rig, which is the node that's going to be used to animate the butterfly along a path. For my rig, I could select either the root joint or the butterfly group, but in this case, I'm going to select the root joint. Then click on select rig, and then the setup rig group button. And if we have a look in the outliner, we can see that the script has reorganized our rig. Our root joint is now in the Butterfly 1 rig group. The Butterfly mesh nodes are now in the Butterfly 1 mesh group. 
and a couple of controls have been created in the Butterfly Controls group. The Movement Control will be used by the script to animate the butterfly along a path, and the Rotate Control will be used by the script to rotate the butterfly as it moves along the path. And you can see that our root joint has been parent constrained to the rotate control. Our butterfly is now ready to animate, so we need a path for the butterfly to move along, which I've already created in my scene using the CV curve tool. So I select my path and click on Select Path, then click on the Attach Butterfly to Path button. I'll set my time range to match the start and end frame in the animation settings and press the play button. And now you can see that the butterfly moves along the path but the wings aren't animated yet. So to animate the wings, click on the create animation button. And now we have butterfly animation flying along the path using all the default animation settings. If you'd like to delete all the wing animation keyframes, you can click on the D button next to the Create Animation button. And if you'd like to detach the butterfly from the path, you can click on the D button next to the Attach Butterfly to Path button. I'll reattach the butterfly to the path, Create Animation, and now let's have a look at the animation settings. Start and end frame are for the movement along the path. So you can see at frame 300, the butterfly is at the start of the path. And at frame 450, the butterfly is at the end of the path. Average speed is the butterfly's average speed as it moves along the path from start to end. If you change the average speed, you can see that it automatically changes the end frame. And if you change the start or end frame, it automatically changes the average speed. Then we've got wing cycle rate, which controls how fast the butterfly moves its wings. At the moment it's set to 1. If we have a look at how fast the wings are currently moving, then change the wing cycle rate to 0 0.2. Click on create animation. And now the wings are moving at a slower rate. Change the wing cycle rate to 5, and now the wings are moving at a much faster rate. I'll set it back to 1 and then have a look at the glide setting. This controls how much the butterfly glides as it flies. If I set this to 0 0.7 and watch through the current animation, you can see that at times when the butterfly descends, it stops moving its wings and glides. If we don't want the butterfly to glide at all, we can set this to zero. Click on Create Animation. And now the butterfly does not glide. And if we set glide to its maximum value of one, the butterfly will now glide whenever possible. And I'll explain in a bit more detail how this works when we get to the physics settings. For now, I'll set glide back to 0.5 and have a look at the roll setting, which controls how much the butterfly rotates sideways as it turns. If we have a close look at our animation, as the butterfly flies around a curved section of the path, the butterfly rotates sideways, like it is leaning into the curve. If we set roll to zero, and have a look at the same section of animation, you can see that the butterfly stays horizontal and no longer leans into the curve. Wing cycle rate, glide and roll can all be keyframed. So let's say you want the butterfly to move its wings a lot at the start, but then you want the wings to slow down. You could set the wing cycle rate to 2, create a keyframe, set glide to 0 and create a keyframe. Then a bit further along the timeline, set the wing cycle rate to 0 0.1 and glide to 1. Create animation. And now when we play back the animation, you can see the change in the wing speed.
The next setting, Path U Value, is used to control the butterfly's movement along the path. A value of 0 sets the butterfly's position to the start of the path. So if we go to frame 300, we can see that the butterfly is at the start of the path, and the Path U Value is 0. And a value of 1 sets the butterfly's position to the end of the path. So if we go to frame 450, we can see that the butterfly is at the end of the path, and the Path U Value is 1. If we want the butterfly to change speed as it moves along the path, we can keyframe the path U value. So as an example, I'll move along the timeline to find a position where I would like the butterfly to slow down. Create a keyframe. Then I'll move a bit further along the path and create another keyframe. Then open up the graph editor and select the path U value attribute. Now we can see the start and end keyframes and the two new keyframes I've just created. I'll select the second keyframe and move it down a bit. Click on create animation. And now when we play back the animation, we can see the butterfly slow down where I've created the new keyframes. Now let's have a look at the physics settings. The MZ Butterfly tool uses some basic physics principles to create the butterfly animation. The first setting, lift coefficient, is used to calculate the effect of lift, which is an upward force on the butterfly, created by the movement of air over the butterfly's wings. This lift force comes into effect as the butterfly starts moving, and increases in strength as the butterfly increases its speed. The lift effect helps the butterfly to glide and to stay in the air with less wing movement. So if we set the lift coefficient to zero and play the animation, we can see that the butterfly has to keep moving its wings quite fast throughout the entire animation. And if we set this to 10, now we can see that the butterfly doesn't have to move its wings as fast. Now going back to the glide setting, the glide value has a similar effect to the lift coefficient, but the glide setting does not affect the butterfly's wing speed, it only affects the amount of gliding, whereas the lift coefficient does affect the wing speed. The next setting is gravity. The default setting is 980, which is roughly equal to Earth's gravity. If you increase the gravity to say 2000, that means the butterfly has to move its wings a lot faster to stay up in the air. And if you decrease the gravity down to say 100, that means it needs a lot less wing movement to stay up in the air. Wing length works in combination with the lift coefficient and gravity. If you want the butterfly movement to be more physically accurate, then match the wing length to the actual length of your butterfly's wing. Most butterfly wings are probably somewhere between 2 to 6 centimeters long. So let's set it to 5 centimeters. Click Create Animation. And have a look at the animation. Then if we set it to 25 centimeters, so it's more like the size of a large bird. We can see that the butterfly doesn't need to move its wings as fast to stay in the air. So basically if you have smaller wings, then the wings will move faster than if you have larger wings. Lift coefficient, gravity and wing length can all be keyframed. And the last setting is frame rate, which is the number of frames per second used for the physics calculations. And that completes the run through of the MZ Butterfly tool script. I hope you enjoy using it.